You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We get to share more short-term volunteer missionary stories. Excited to share that. And uh, this time, um, last time we talked about agricultural consultancy, now mm-hmm. community health education, and to help us introduce uh, short-term volunteers, Anne Gonzalez. Thanks so much for joining us today, Anne. Thanks for having me. Anne is, oh, I forgot to put it in my yeah, notes. we don't have your title I'm in the our manager notes. Manager. Short-term training and engagement Thank you. in the Office of International Mission. Manager. You'd think we would I should remember know it, these things but that's after a while. But really long. It is a very long title. <laughs> that's all right. Does it fit on your business card? It does. Oh, it good. Does. That's impressive. <laughs> um, so you get to work with uh, the the short term volunteers who serve all around the world. Basically, uh, from the point that they commit until they conclude their service, they are in my purview. Oh wow! And yeah. one of those volunteers uh, that has been serving recently is Lauren Aw. Lauren, thanks so much for joining us by phone today. Yes, thank you for having me. Well. Tell us, Lauren, where did you recently, where were you recently assigned to serve? Um, So this past July, I was in the Republic of Congo as a part of a Mercy Medical team and then connected with that. Well, through that experience, I was able to return to Africa to Burundi for um, community health evangelism. That is, that sounds like a lot. I'm excited to unpack that and learn more about it. Let's back up a little bit. How did you become interested in serving as a short-term volunteer? So for me, it all started, um, well, when I was young, a teenager, I went on my first mission trip to Hong Kong to um, do VBS and whatnot for a month, and I was 15. And since then, I have been interested and passionate about missions. Um, I became involved with Mercy Medical Teams in 2013 on my first trip to Madagascar, and I have been doing them since. What kind of experiences uh, led to um, led to doing these trips? What kind of background do you have that, that lends itself well to this type of mission service? I... I'm very blessed to grow up in a very loving and strong LCMS household. My father is a LCMS pastor and my mom is a Lutheran school teacher. And they have always encouraged my interest in missions and passion for traveling. And then as I pursued my career in medicine, um, doing trips such as Mercy Medical Teams just felt like a very natural and obvious way to combine the two things that I'm most passionate about. So Lauren is currently a registered nurse and she's in school to become a nurse practitioner. Very cool. Yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of, yeah. (laughs) Thanks, Anne. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So um, tell us just a snippet. um, I know I really want to get into your your work in Burundi. Um, Just a snippet about your time um, doing the Mercy Medical Team. Uh, What, what, what you took away from that experience? Uh, this most recent one, or just in general? In general. <laughs> um, well, I think that medicine provides an awesome opportunity for people to hear more about our ultimate physician and healer. Um, I always see it as a doorway to learning about um, Jesus and eternal life. And like I said, that ultimate healing that only God can provide um, but medicine is like the perfect mechanism to reach out to those who would, you know, not not normally be interested or come to other other ways we provide missionary work or evangelism. Mm-hmm. Um, so Mercy Medical Teams is just a perfect opportunity to provide um, care to communities that don't have access to health care otherwise and are just very desperate and needed. And it bolsters uh, local pastors and churches and really gives them a boost and a fire that they need. And it's just always cool to watch. Mm -hmm. So let's focus in on the community health education um, that you, the the, uh, recent trip in Burundi. Tell us about the, tell us about the community and the people, the setting in which you served. Sure. So we went to Burundi. I just got back yesterday. <laughs> um, we we were in Burundi, and we the group of individuals that we served were a part of the local Lutheran church there, and 
um, myself, Steph Schulte, and Andrea Ferguson taught a group of about 20 women about the women's life cycle, about their bodies, how to care for it, and how God created us. Um, while that was happening, Pastor Schulte and Pastor Jacob Gagger were teaching a group of men and some women about uh, the catechism. And so these were happy, happening simultaneously. And then we had a lot of worship services and prayer services and just spent a lot of time encouraging the local church. What is the what is the need for a a, a thing a thing <laughs> experience um, a, a mission trip like this? What what's that need like um, in in Burundi and in countries like Burundi? Yes, so even here in the states, there are a lot of myths and misconceptions around healthcare and our bodies, and and that is even with high access to healthcare and regular visits. And so if there are myths and misconceptions even here, that becomes even more prominent um, in places like Africa or Burundi where there is not regular health care, where, where a lot of women don't know about their bodies or how it works. And this became especially true on multiple MMTs that I have been on when I have elderly women asking me why they haven't had their menstrual period in years because the education just isn't there. Mm -hmm. And so doing the education through a spiritually based program um, was just awesome. And it was, the women were so open and they had a ton of questions and it just was such a wonderful experience. And the program that we use not just educates the women that we have directly, but it also prepares them to take it back to their village to then continue that education and to share that knowledge with other people in their lives. Mm -hmm. How does something like this make a difference um, for the women that you're serving and, and for the rest of the women that they know? How does it empower them to, um, to, to know more and to do it in, um, in a setting, in a, in a Christian setting where they also learn about uh, the gospel? A lot of these women are have grown up and are currently immersed in cultures where being a woman is so difficult. Mm -hmm. It is such a patriarchal um, community where the man not only rules the community or the household, a lot of times he dictates power over a woman's body as well. And so to kind of give them that knowledge and education to at least claim control of, for example, their menstrual cycle or to teach about prenatal care or about hygiene or about symptoms and all of these things. And then to explain that God created them in such a perfect and wonderful way and with such intention. And so to not just empower them physically of their own body, but to also realize that we were made in God's image and to give them power and encouragement in that sense as well. Yeah, absolutely. How did your, <clears throat> excuse me, how did your trip to Burundi or, or uh, some of the other um, Mercy Medical teams as well, how have they shaped your life for you back here in the States? Uh, it certainly has, it looks like one trip has certainly shaped the next and, 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 uh, you, you continue to be engaged with uh, with opportunities to serve on short term missions, but tell us how does this shape your your life back in the states and uh, your studies or your work mm -hmm. or uh, the ways that you serve here? Yes, I think the biggest and easiest impact my trips abroad have have caused for my daily life, so to speak is this the humility that it brings of all in regard to all my first world problems? <laughs> um, just, it is such an obvious reminder of how blessed I am and, and how lucky I am to be, to have been brought up in the house that I did, the situation that I did with the parents that I did to have the job that I have to have all of the opportunities and blessings. It, it's just overwhelming when I return home to my uh, my apartment and air conditioning and my comfortable bed and all of these luxuries that 
are easily taken for granted. And so that is always overwhelming when I return home. Um, another way is it just brings a whole nother level of empathy and compassion. Um, a part of my regular job is I do a lot of that same education that I provided the African women, um, but to children and teenagers and just teaching about bodies and providing education and, and encouragement. And so to just deepen that level of compassion and empathy, um, it, it is not just helpful, but I think as a nurse, it, it serves me very well. Mm-hmm. And the, this is uh, the story of one volunteer who served in a short-term setting. Um, there are many stories like this, and we have many more to yes. share. Um, if someone wants to have a story like this, they want to serve in a short-term uh, volunteer position, how do they how do they take that first step in developing a story like this? They can go to lcms.org slash mercy teams to see the 2020 opportunities to serve. There's an application you fill out, and then we, we work with them from there. There's actually a new type of MMT that we haven't sent in a while going to Peru in February to mm-hmm. do community health rather than a clinical team. And wow. so we are still looking for people for that team. So if anybody's been inspired, we'd love to ha- hear from them. So a community health team headed to, it's a Mercy Medical Team, community health education happening in Peru in February. Correct. Now's the time, though, to start <laughs> yes, doing. Yes, absolutely. Now's almost kind of late. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, now's the time to to take that first step and go to lcms.org slash mercy teams. Correct. All right. And you can find more information. Lauren, thank you so much for being our guest and sharing your story of being a short-term volunteer with LCMS International Mission. Yes, of course. Thank you so much. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.